Good morning, listeners. Welcome to Planet Sky FF. My name's Serge. And my name is James. And for the first time this season, this show does not revolve around £50,000. I think it's safe to say now, as we go into the last two game days, James, we ain't winning it. No, we're definitely not winning it. But I could have, I could have told you that about eight months ago. <laughs> well, actually, to be honest, when we first sat down to do the first pilot episodes, I could have told you that mm. we're not going to be winning the £50,000 this year. Next year... Yeah, put it this way, my odds would be less than fifty thousand to one. So I'm getting good odds on my on my playing, I think. I'll as be honest. Most people. Um it, in a strange way, and I think a lot of listeners will have listened to this with mild amusement at my uh, approach to the game, which has been um mixed, let's say, um and bad. I still actually like and enjoy the game. I actually kick myself when I when I forget to make transfers and stuff, I think I'm looking forward to Sky next year. But there's one simple big change for me next year on Sky. Um, well, there's probably two simple big changes for me on Sky. One is that the only way I can play Sky is with spreadsheets. Um, so if I don't plan my spreadsheet out for the whole season and manage it in that way, then I'm, I'm not going to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, um, play Sky. And the second is um, I need to get good at setting reminders on my phone. Oh, what have you done? No, no, no. Like as in every day. <laughs> What's the like Sky transfer or Sky team? Um, Do I need and... to message you every day? Uh, no, no, no. Nah. Or, or just every day that there's games. <laughs> <laughs> Sky. Because I did, I, I, I don't know why, but I did have a moment yesterday, especially where I was like, I, I did think about just messaging you and just going, Sky. Um, you know, can I ask you a question, actually? So yeah. um, you're, you, you're in a WhatsApp group with a few Sky players, right? It's true, yes. Does that help? Not in the sense of um, what transfers am I going to make, because ultimately that's down to your decision-making. I mean, in reminding you of the relevance of Sky, because other than this week, I don't actually talk to anybody, about, other than this episode, I don't really talk to anybody else about Sky that much. Like None of my other mates who play FPL, and I talk to FPL with, regularly i'm talking about four or five times a week would ever we don't ever talk about sky i think that that was that chat that uh, mark edworthy you did used to do the sky podcast very kindly invited me him and dan cox very kindly invited me to be involved in i've taken more of a watching brief on it and sometimes they'll, they'll tag me for an opinion on spurs or something like that i, I don't think the guys in there particularly want my sky fucking opinions <laughs> to tell you the truth there's a lot of very experienced players in there so take them listen more- i reckon you've beaten a couple haven't you surely yeah, I probably will have, <laughs> but um, there's, there's quite a few who will have beaten me as well. Um, it's been a difficult season for a lot of the experienced players, I think, and next season I think they'll find it just as difficult. But um, yeah, I've taken quite a watching brief on it. It's certainly been very, very useful for me to get an idea of what groupthink would be, because previously I wouldn't have an idea of what the general consensus of what players think it was, because there's not enough in the Twitter community. Now, obviously, I've got the real double up of the kind of very personal touch of our Sky Slack channel for our mm-hmm. patrons. So yep. I've got constant contact with them every, every day. There's lots of kind of asking for advice and stuff like that in there as well, which is really helpful. And the same with that WhatsApp group as well. Um, so now, yeah, very much a handle. I understand what you're saying. You don't feel like you've got a, as much it's not front of mind. That. It's, this is not front of mind for me, Sky Fantasy Football, to be honest right, with you. Right, so we need to set up a WhatsApp group or something, don't we? <laughs> you and I just need to set up a WhatsApp group Rem- and, and, and invite Manchild and mute him and uh, <laughs> call, it, call it Sky Fantasy Football. Yeah, um, yeah interesting. Should we, um, I don't know if I was going to say, should we have a little side bet on Sky next year? We'll call it, we'll do half of, half of FPL, so 25 quid on Sky. Stick to the standard 50 on FPL. So it's just write me the money. No, no, no. I don't know why you put yourself in financial predicaments. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, All right, good. I want, anybody... you to, I want you to be motivated. Exactly. I'm just trying to fight. If, if, if it's the pain of losing money that's the motivation to make me uh, more engaged, then I'm well up for it. Listen, by the time this next summer comes around, a pint of beer in a pub might be £12.50, mate. So <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just be buying us a couple of beers. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. So um, you made a transfer on Monday, and you it went well. This week, yeah, yeah. I think the story goes a little bit further back in terms of 
the previous Saturday, for those who didn't listen to the previous Sky podcast, in terms of deciding on the Friday prior to Man City playing at Brighton that was going to go from Kane to Sterling and then deciding not to do it. And I would have gone all out and captain Sterling that day. Then there was the Siunku mess up on the Sunday. So on the last, on the Monday, when Manchester United played Southampton, I moved Kane down to Ings and that facilitated the move that on the Wednesday I could move from Siunchu to Jesus. I wouldn't have enough to move from Siunchu to Raheem Sterling. I did captain Jesus on the Wednesday against Bournemouth. He did return. But I know which one of the two players I certainly would have rather had over the last few weeks. And then, of course, the double of that was that I've missed out on Kane's four goals in the two games when I maintained the consistency before buying him before Spurs played Sheffield United that he will get a return run rate of one per game. Now, I think it was the right decision to sell, but I'm also not that surprised that he's gone off and proved a few people wrong and shut them up. So that left me with just the one transfer left. I was going to hold it really for Manchester City yesterday. And I had a long look on Monday at some of the ownership numbers and realised that basically a Sheffield United clean sheet was absolutely going to destroy me. And Everton being so bad was like, yeah, I can see this happening because the combined ownership of sort of like your Bulldogs and Hendersons amongst the top top thousand was going to be a lot of people. So I decided I needed to do something. So I spent a lot of the afternoon analysing who was the best pick. And first I looked at it as a two-game week punt. And then I decided, fuck the second game. I needed to hit the best captain. And I came to the conclusion that the best choice was Matt Doherty. Um, and that worked out all right. So I think he's, he's pleasing that the last transfer used has been worthwhile because even if even if Doherty doesn't return against Chelsea on Sunday, was it 26 point or he got? Mm. I mean, 26, 26. Point, 26 points from a transfer is good, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Danny, Ings, Danny Ings would probably have to score a hat-trick to make that unworthwhile. So really pleased with that. And I think he's possibly given me some different thinking and you shouldn't read too much into one transfer but a little thinking in towards differences next season. The one the one regret I had where we really highlighted with the likes of Greenwood and Foden a couple of weeks ago was that these kids are going to play. They're really good. They're an amazing price. They're not going to be this price next year. Get them in. I don't reflect on that. I think it was the wrong decision to make. What I, what I regret in reflection was that I'm looking at the squad and I've got so much Manchester City and Manchester United and a little bit of Liverpool. That's basically my squad now. And it probably went a little bit overboard because there's only one of them from each team that can win a Man of the Match award, for example. Sure. Um, And you can only captain one of them. And I think I probably went a little bit too far with it, but it it did look on the restart. It was like, just get as many City and United players as you can. And that's, that's kind of the way it ended up going for me. The unfortunate was I had to use some bits in between to change a plan. And then have therefore missed out on Kane or Sterling, whichever way you want to look at it, and ended up with neither bits. So, you know, if I'd have kept Kane and he'd returned at Newcastle and then was Siunku being suspended, he would have been my captain Sunday as well. So, whether you look at it, I missed out on the Sterling against Brighton and Watford or the Kane against Leicester, and I wouldn't have captained him against Newcastle. But I've essentially missed out on all of that, which has stopped me having a decent jump at the end. So, I'm ranked at the moment 322, no transfers left. But if you'd have offered me that probably at the start of lockdown, I'd have been really happy with that, I think. And uh, so we've only really got two games left for captaincy, which is today. Um, yeah. If you're not picking a Manchester United player, you're mental. Um, which one That's, are you going to go dis- with? I disagree with that at all. Um, completely, actually. You think Salah or a Liverpool asset might I be one? I think a Liverpool asset is completely viable to captain tonight. It's definitely not mental, particularly if you're looking to go for a differential, because just simply the fact that most people are going to get the Manchester United team are going to lead them that way. So if you've still got Salah Mane sitting in there, even VVD Trent, I wouldn't fit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fear it. I think, for example, if I had Greenwood and a Liverpool asset tonight. And actually, I, I do have both of them, but I'll, I'll probably just captain Fernandez and go with everyone else tonight because um, it's just not enough for me to gain by going against it. It, it. Put it this way, it could go worse for me by not doing it in my position than better than what I'll gain. I'm better off going with it. If I get, if I get it wrong tonight, I could be outside the top 500. 
and I'd like to at least finish in that position. And if I go with it, I might have a small rise because of the other players I've got. But going with the Liverpool guys tonight, it's absolutely fine, particularly if you're looking to make late gains. You've got to do something different. If you're looking to make gains, proper gains, and I don't know, get into the top 50 or top 100, or if you can, if, if you're chasing the guy who's first and still got a shot, you basically can't captain Bruno Fernandes tonight because that's going to be the safe play that the majority of people can yeah, are going to do. Yeah, I, I suppose the where, where I'm coming from is um, I'm in the, I'm in, I feel like I'm in the minority where I don't, I don't think Liverpool are going to steamroll Chelsea and I think Chelsea are going to get something from the game today um, and put in a good performance. Um, yeah. And the majority of people seem to think, no, they won't. So um, that, that Liverpool will win comfortably and potentially even keep a clean sheet. So I, I'm really um, of the mindset that no, because look, Chelsea, if they get a draw today, then they're in the Champions League next season. And so that's decent mindset for them to be able to think, OK, if we get a draw today, we are in the Champions League next season. That's not true. Well, if they get a draw today, then they go up to 64 points. Yeah. And then Leicester and United are on 62. So, yeah. so if they if... get a draw, they'll both be on 63. Chelsea are on 64. But if one beats the other, then the other will stay on 62. Have you, have you forgotten that at six o'clock today that Manchester United are oh, going to yeah, tear true. your team apart? That's true. <laughs> We had to be a Man United, today. that's it. No, so if, if, they, if they draw today and Manchester United win tonight and Leicester beat Manchester United, they ain't going to make it, are they? If they don't beat Wolves. So it's it's still on for the yeah. final day. So back to the original point, I think Chelsea are going to get something. It's why I left Pulisic in my, my regular FPL team. I just, I, okay. I'm, not, I'm not seeing this um, thing. And I also uh, think that uh, they'll be distracted by the parade and all that jazz and the trophy lifting and it can work both ways right you're not going to want to lift the trophy having lost a game you're going to want to win a game and do it on a high but I also think it can work the other way and be a distraction so I don't, I don't know with this um, yeah I, I'm not sure sh- not so think, sure I James. think both Manchester United and Liverpool will win comfortably this evening I think they'll both win by a similar score probably around 2-0 for both of them if you're asking me which player who's a decent differential is most likely to go off and go mad tonight? The, the answer I would give you is Anthony Martial, mm-hmm. who I think in hindsight, I'm, I keep looking, I've been looking at his 9.6 million price for the last 10 days, sitting here in a lot of regret. That's the guy I should have gone to. Even yeah. when, I bought, when, I, when I bought Danny Ings, that's the guy I should have gone to was Anthony Martial. Mm-hmm. And then, I, but then I'm thinking oh, I've got so much of Manchester United coverage already, and what Danny Ings obviously offered me as well was three games in a week. Where I mean, I've got I need to cover in for Siunku basically, and he obviously offered me the captaincy coverage for the Sunday against Bournemouth. And obviously, if he doesn't miss the penalty and scores, he's he's it in a great hall, man of the match, all them things. That's another big difference, right? Which would have cost quite a few people. But Anthony Martial, nine point six million. If that's your, a lot, a lot of guys will have one transfer left. I think, you know, if you're sitting there with Jesus, and I know they've got obviously still got a great fixture on Sunday. But if you look at Jesus and go, I think he'll start on mm-hmm. on Sunday. But I would look strongly at going Anthony Martial if people can do it with the one free transfer left. I think that's that's the one I would probably recommend the most. But if people want to go for the Liverpool guys tonight, I wouldn't have an issue with it. Do you want to predict the City team for Sunday? Because you know what, that that could really affect some some people's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we answer some of these Twitter questions we've had, James? Yes, let's do that. Just, just so you know, um, because I've been a bit lax with my transfers, I've just bought this morning. Because if I don't use these guys, if I don't use these transfers, I'm going to end up losing them. Well, how many have you um, got left, mate? Um, well, I'm about to use four, so I'll have four left. So, so you bought... haven't used any transfers since last Wednesday. Nah. <laughs> I've bought. So now my team is Marshall, Rashford, Greenwood is my front line. Bowen and Antonio in midfield. Wambisaka, Trent. VVD at the back today. So I am going to kill it today. Today, is there a prize for the best score in a match day? Confirm. Oh, my God. Confirm four <laughs> transfers made. Done. And who am I captaining, James? I'm going to captain Antonio. Antonio. Mikel Antonio. Yeah, confirm, captain, done. Oh, my God. We're really trying to like gain <laughs> listeners and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. At this end of the season, I think everybody's done. No, What's I'm, your rank? I'm, I'm going to captain. Do you know what? This is the interesting thing I was going to talk to you about. You've been... Semi-treading water in that, let's say, 200 to 700 
rank for a little while. Um, but that's an active pool of people. I've been at 20K, give or take, for ages doing nothing. So it makes me wonder how many... I'm, I'm in dead team territory, I feel yes. like. So there's, what, half a million? More than half... They said, how many players do they say in Sky now? More than half a million. Half a million officially, but a lot of them, you've got to remember, a lot of people got second and third teams. So, I so think probably 300,000 may have, as in different players, players. registered. Maybe, so, if yeah. you say top 20, 20K is dead, top 20K is dead. So, really, what do you think? 5,000 engaged managers? No, more than that, because we've, we've seen that from like questions of like, all right, it's my first season. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm, I'm just outside the top 100,000. So we, we, there are yeah, going to be engaged people who are just, with respect, and I'm sorry, not very good. Definitely. Yeah. So I don't think it's quite that low. I think in terms of actual engaged, you, you, somewhere between ten and 20,000 maybe uh, at the maximum a push. But it could be, it could be I'm completely wrong and it's as low as a couple of thousands could be. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. I mean, they'll never release those stats. but No, nah, of course not. Uh, right. Okay. Here we go. This first question coming in from Benny Blanco, um, cheeky git, as you called him yesterday. Did you? Is he yesterday on the show? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Benny uh, says, <coughs> simple question, and it's a question that we should answer. Final day, simple question. Best captain option. So we all think it should be a Manchester City player. Really, it's just a case of picking the right one. I think. Best choice would probably be Sterling, I think. You will obviously get the benefit of the team, so obviously wait for that. I think, to predict the City team at the weekend, I think Edison, Walker, Otamendi, Stones, probably Zinchenko could be Mendy, Gundogan, De Bruyne, David Silva, Raheem Sterling... Riyad Mahrez, Jesus. I think it might be a little bit stronger than we'd originally thought. And that's partly because they've obviously lost the FA Cup um, FA Cup semi-final. And they've got a... They'll have a, like a 12-day gap to Real Madrid. And I just think they need to keep people a little bit fresh. So I think, yeah, the whole back four will change and that's what's been happening anyway. And he just can't afford to risk the Laporte, basically. De Bruyne's won off the assist record of Thierry Henry. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the downside of De Bruyne is he might be, and it felt a little bit like this at certain times yesterday where I wasn't sure if he really wanted to be shooting. Mm -hmm. He had a free kick on the edge of the box, which he's been taking some great free kicks lately. And I thought he might clip this into the box, you know, which is obviously uh, from a wider position, how he then set up the Ports goal. Sterling has come out yesterday and he went, oh, I really want to get the 20 goals. That is not what Raheem Sterling was thinking yesterday when he took that penalty. Raheem Sterling was thinking, if I get a hat-trick today and get another hat-trick on Sunday, I can still catch Jamie Vardy. Now, mm -hmm. he needs five to outdo him now, so it's very, very unlikely. But I think Raheem Sterling has got goals very much in his mind at the moment. Jesus, you can't really write off, but I don't think he'd be the best choice. And obviously, with David Silva... There's a lot of Sky Fink at the moment that the only thing he needs to do to win man of the match on Sunday is walk on the pitch. So David yeah. Silva is obviously a, a very interesting one. And I wouldn't rule out Riyad Mahrez either because I just think right, well, it'll, it'll, he hasn't played yesterday. He will definitely get some minutes on Sunday. So I think when you suddenly think of if that's the possible City front five, for example, that I've mentioned there, that's very strong. The disappointing one for people who will be thinking, I want to move between the City assets at the weekend He's probably, I would now expect Foden not to start. And it's, it's just, look, I'm predicting fucking pet roulette, right? I could be completely wrong. But you're not going to be able to get away from Foden to another one. That that would be the the issue. So probably that's the position I'm, I would have been in if I did have any free transfers left. So you're literally just leaving him for the sub appearance and hoping he does something, which he has done before this season. So it's not impossible. But I think, yeah, Probably for me, I would edge for Sterling on Sunday if I had. A few, a few people wanting to borrow transfers in the tw in the Twitter questions. Um, Amra Batman yeah, and Benny, but I'm afraid, yeah, of course, you haven't got any left, mate. Um, maybe that's how what we can do next season. I'll bet you based on I can give you transfers at the end of the season if you're beating me. 
Um, Rob Pick says... You forget to even do it on Sunday. You're a disgrace. <laughs> what was I doing on Sunday? I'm trying to remember. Who knows? It's Sunday um, coming. No, this Sunday I won't because I'll, I'll do five in one go, won't I? Yeah, but you might still forget. You've got mates nah, coming nah, around to watch football true. and stuff. And eat meat. Rob Pick, next season, what are your feelings on single day game day captaincies? Will you be more willing to swerve them or do you think you got the balance right this season? I think I generally got the balance right. Um, there were a few which in hindsight you go, oh, what was I doing? So, I mean, I had Harry Wilson for Bournemouth against Southampton towards the start of the season. But actually, and I held him too long. Actually, it didn't work out too bad, reflecting on the points he got for me between September and November in the end. I was actually going to sell him the day he played Spurs and didn't. And uh, he scored twice. It actually worked out right for me. Pookie was the other one reflecting. I got him when Norwich played Watford on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. But it was one where I'd got him for a little free game stint. It was a free for one over someone. And on paper, it looked absolutely the right move. So, and at that time, he didn't realise quite how bad Norwich were, for example. And he'd obviously been on a decent run and shown himself to be capable. I think what's interesting is I obviously very nearly went into this Monday with no players in spite of six players put. Uh, six teams playing because I wasn't overly keen on any of the assets and the reshuffle that I wanted to do meant that I, I could no longer get to Richarlison for example who would have been my first choice because the idea originally was to have him for the Villa game Monday and then Bournemouth but I couldn't get to it anymore without sacrificing the Man City or United player which I wasn't prepared to do in terms of the single days I think it's a balance right so Nick Pope has been my best transfer since the restart. I was convinced about it during lockdown. I said it's the best the best transfer left, in my opinion. And I think it's proven to be so. And basically, it was I probably wouldn't have ended up going that way if Burnley and Crystal Palace hadn't been a single game day. Monday. Yeah. So it's it's a lot about timing and then understanding, right, if I get this player at X point, what's my gains? When do I need to leave? I think that's the thing people don't necessarily think about. I need to get this person for X single game day, but what's my exit strategy? Mm -hmm. That's what you need to consider. So people you, do get yeah left in your squad for longer. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, has he has you know Harry Wilson been sitting in my team for two months, for example? And listen, he wasn't the worst player to have at that time, but I didn't really have an exit strategy. I did the the overhaul and went. Well, Southampton is playing Bournemouth on Friday night. I've got to have one of them, and yeah. I chose a player that ended up returning. It was fine. The, the real solution should have been there. There's no excuse not to have one. I'm selling it the next day. That's on reflection what needs to be different. So I need greater clarity on what my exit strategy is going to be. And I think a little bit like you, I've done the season without a spreadsheet until the return of lockdown, where I decided to come up with one which I shared with you, Serge, and was available for use anytime you wanted it. Well, yeah, can I, I just I, say, I, I had a spreadsheet at Christmas time, which I shared with uh, FPL Potter, Jamie, who was especially grateful. That was the period of the season. Well, you were doing best. I did the best, yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, I uh, said I, prob I probably owe Jamie a point, because if you'll remember back then, uh, when I shared the spreadsheet with him, he bet me a point that he'd beat me. And if he's not beating me, then uh, I'll eat my hat as well as buy him a pint. <laughs> I set it up because I normally find it quite easy to remember what TV games are where, but this right. over this congested period just became That's a hard. little bit too much. Mm. Even in three days, you began, which, which one's in three days again? Mm. So that proved useful for me. And I think next year I will start with, with one of them, my own one, create it my own way and, and work from there and properly map out what I'm doing. So exit strategy is really important to remember as part of an entry strategy for single game week players or single game day players sorry we've uh, answered a few of these in the chat like david silver or sterling for final day captain definitely sterling i wouldn't say definitely there's a big group think at the moment towards david silver just because they get like if if they get any penalties they might let him He'll take, take them, it all that free kicks stuff. he can take yeah. um yeah, De Bruyne yeah, doesn't I, I want to score. He wants to assist. <laughs> De Bruyne wants to keep it to save it and someone put a fucking rebound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and the last question, well, actually, there's uh, two questions here, sorry. One from FPL Twiggy. Top hun Next season, top 100 in Sky, 
or top 10K in FPL, what would you be more proud of? Probably top 10k in FPL because I just I think that is, I just think that is extremely hard now. Um, I feel like with and, top 10k and, in FPL, if you don't start well, if you're not going into the last, if you're not halfway through the season, top 100k to 200k, you're not going to be able to get into the sky season. now for next season. Yeah, top 100, top 100 is where I would be targeting. I wouldn't say as a minimum, but that's definitely where I'd want to be next season. Whereas I could say, yeah, top 10K in FPL would be amazing. Do I realistically think I'll get it? No. Mm. So from that perspective, yeah. Top 10K in FPL. Probably, yeah. yeah you both I, get I, you get the same for both, by the way, which is fuck all. I agree. Um, now, Heskibo has asked the question, which perhaps, James, if you want to leave a detailed answer until next week's pod, we can. Um, but what's the biggest lesson you have learned in how to play Sky this season? And what is the biggest weakness still remaining in your game that you want to fix next year? So while you think about it, I'll, I'll answer it for me. Uh, and I've mentioned my uh, biggest fucking lesson. Fucking alarm clock. Is, well, yeah, those two <laughs> things. But my, I've got a second weakness that still I don't... Um, I haven't spent a lot of time understanding tier points, in my opinion, this season. Um, and I don't do research into which players are most likely to get tier points and not other than if it comes out of your mouth, basically, James. So when you mentioned to me that certain <laughs> players are uh, bonus point magnets and what have you, like a Jared Bowen, for example, when you mentioned that he's getting shot tiers and tackle tiers and this and that, um, I'll be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. That makes him an asset that I consider want to go and buy. So tier points is is definitely a weakness in my game that I haven't spent any time um, thinking about, I mean, if you look at FPL, you you rarely buy an FPL asset based on their ability to get BPS. It's always like an icing on the cake. It's like a Danny Ings, for example. If he scores a goal, sometimes he gets it gets BPS quite often, but that's icing on the cake rather than the real reason you went and bought him. Whereas here, you actually buy players based on their ability to get tier points, not necessarily on their sh uh, goals and assists and clean sheets and what have you. So. I think tier points is the one that I want to have a better understanding of. Yeah, and I'll be doing some analysis on that for people over the sort of August and that in terms of what people did last season and didn't do and some players that might have gone under our radar or, or players that are obvious to target. I think particularly around shooting tiers, I'd like to do further exploring about because you obviously always have that consensus, don't you, that Salah just shoots all day long and it always hits shot tiers. And I'm not quite so certain over many a game this this season that's necessarily been the case. And yet the flip of that is you get people like Aubameyang who it feels like he can be really quiet in a game, but he doesn't miss when he gets there, right? And actually, yeah. the the fact that Salah would have more shots in theory should mean that he's the better choice if they'd be the same price hypothetically because he'll get the extra shot tier in for you. Well, I think Aubameyang might have had a few tackle tiers since he's been moving out wider, but I'll investigate that. Um, the one for me is aggression. I didn't make enough transfers soon enough. I got to no November and I still had like 37 transfers left, which is okay because it was part of my strategy of my think at the start of the season. And bear in mind, I didn't really know what, what I was doing. There were a couple of early ones that I really missed out on. And it meant that I was always chasing. So I was never in a position to be, I've got this player, you're gonna, you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to go somewhere else if you want to beat me. I was always the one who was gonna have to go somewhere else. Whereas so even things like Bruno Fernandez, I didn't get until I properly watched him against Spurs on the Friday night after restart. And I was in fact, no, I did get him that day, but it wasn't until then, whereas everybody else was on weeks earlier, just went, mm. right, I can see it on the on that like Wolves game even. The first game, people were like, this guy's running the game. He's hitting passing tier. He's hitting shots here. Right, I'm not going to think about it twice. He's in. And and, and it's those guys will be the most successful. And you're not going to hit it all the time. So it's balancing that, deciding when. How long do you wait to get Bruno Fernandes? I think the guys have done very, very well here. Literally watched the first game and got him in, for example. So I need to be more aggressive in my play to say, because I I have the benefit as well that I watch a lot of football. So if I see something and know it, really I should be going and acting on it. And that probably means changing my plans a little bit sometimes. I can be a bit strict in terms of once I know what I'm doing, I'm doing it and, and that's the end of it. Whereas I think if something comes along again like that, you just have to go, oh, I need to get him, I need to get him now. 
indeed. So, uh, James, there's our Twitter questions. We're wrapping up uh, Sky FF. We'll be back next week with Sky FF, though, once the season is done. And it will be a really good chance, actually, to reflect back on the season. I'm going to look through my screenshots of my weekly points. Uh, for what it's worth, it'll be worth it for comedy value more than anything else. Uh, we'll um, have some laugh next Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it would be good. Um, and Just keep an eye on Twitter, at Planet FPL Pod, when James puts a tweet out asking for questions. Um, and they will be more reflective of the entire season next week when we when we start looking into Sky FF. Um, but I hope it's been an enjoyable, uh, enjoyable season. I think, James, what we should do next season is get a cash prize league for Sky for the reason of trying to get more of our listeners who play FPL but don't play Sky to get into the game a little bit and, and try and... I don't know if... I, I'm, not saying I, that, I'm not saying that everybody's motivated by money, but, you know, it's just that little thing of let's get, no, uh, listen, let's get people can, involved. I want more people to play is my ultimate goal. Put it that way. Listen, th- let's be very honest about this. For the majority of the listeners who, who are playing, right, will have a, an account with Skybet. So we don't need to hide away from the reality. Are we saying they're degenerate gamblers? Uh, well, you are. <laughs> um, we, don't, we don't need to shy away from that. You need to have an account, account with Skybet to play the game, right? So most of us have got a... a an account with a gambling company it is what it is right whether you gamble or you don't gamble i my intention therefore is yes to set up um i think you can set up cash leagues uh is it 20 10 5 and 2 pound i think okay my intention is to set up a cash league for all of those tiers and my intention is to stop someone coming in and winning the fucking lot is you tell me which league you want to be in and i'll give you the code for it yep that's that's my intention, and obviously I'm going to have to be in all of them because I'm setting it up, but <laughs> hopefully I'll win a lot of them. But no, listen, yeah, I'll set it. that up, and I'll tell you what it won't be. There won't be no kicking people out of mini leagues because they're doing well and stuff like that. No, nobody will be getting kicked out. So that's what I want to do. I feel like you're, you're, you're alluding to something that's happening in places. Yes, there is definitely places where people will get, are in mini leagues and are doing very well or have been invited in and they're getting kicked out because they're doing too well towards the end of the season. It does happen, unfortunately. Wow. It Scandals. Won't, it it, it smell, won't happen in our league. I smell a Planet FPL special coming, the scandal of the mini league. <laughs> investigative journalism at its and finest. There will, there will obviously still be a free league as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course there will be. So, yeah, we'll have something set. I'll set something up for my patrons as well, if that's what they want to do. That there'll be a lot more mini leagues for for me. Mm. Well, we don't know about you, but it will um, be for me next year. I'll be there or thereabouts watching Man. watching brief. Watching. How brief. have you got eight transfers? Left? I haven't. I've got four. You just served me. I bought Antonio and Trent and. Why have you done it now? Do it at five o'clock. That's a good point, actually, James. Because I'll, I'll be. I'll forget. I'll tell you honestly why, James. Because uh, today. I am going to Beaconsfield to the model village with the family in the afternoon and I'll forget later. hundred percent. Do you know what? I think you're going to have to give me a login, mate. Yeah. <laughs> pin, pin is one, two, three, four. Keep it simple. <laughs> just, just, just one quick one before, before we finish up. Um, some people might be in a blessed position where they're still sitting there in, with two transfers, for example. Yes. Or some people might have eight. A couple of players just to highlight who might be good for you if there's a player you want to get to and you can't, and you need another cheaper player to facilitate. Mm-hmm. And they're both West Ham players, actually. So your old mate, Suchek, yep. he's 6.4 million, mate, I believe. Uh, and in, in Sky prices, that's cheap. Very cheap. Abs- it absolutely is. And also, I don't know the status of Ryan Fredericks. That's really worth double-checking, because Ben Johnson, who played against Watford on Friday night, and I thought acquitted himself quite well. What did you think, Suj? Yeah, he was decent. It was funny because I saw him pre-season away at Fulham um, in, a, in a friendly and thought, okay, yeah, this kid, uh, you'll remember I was talking about him as Ledley King's nephew, um, yeah. was decent. And then out of nowhere at Christmas, Ngakia jumped into the starting lineup ahead of him. So at the time, I did think, where's Ben Johnson gone? Um, so yeah, he's got, he's got talent. He's 4.9 million. And they might be ones who, yes, it's a difficult game tonight. I'd certainly lean into Suchek if it was a straight choice between the two. I tell you what, if West Ham scored tonight, the most likely scorer is, is, is Suchek because of the way he attacks the penalty box. I'm not even joking. Did you used to ever watch Top Gear? Yes. Not religiously, and, but yes. And on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, dear. James recommends two West Ham players. And on that bombshell, do make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you are. Tomorrow's going to be a good one. It's the last main pod before the final game week of the season. So much to talk about. Um, and there'll obviously be more content straight after, but this is this is the big and I feel like this is the grand finale type pod before the final game week of the season. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you are getting your podcast, whether it's iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, um, and so on and so on. Other than that, enjoy the games today. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Good luck, everyone. Cue music, man, child. <laughs>